Well, hello everyone, and thanks for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. Before we get started on our project, these are the people that commented in my last video. They are also some people who went over to my Etsy store and purchased some things. I really appreciate that. Pam did, Jane did, Diana did. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And what we're doing today is creating a mini journal. So take a look at this fantastic cover that had a book in it. Now, when I bought it, the little book that was in there was missing, but I fell in love with the cover. And take a look of the front there. Isn't that cool? The snap works. I've tried it. What I have to do is just kind of put my finger in there. And once I put a journal in there, it will be, you know, it'll hold it together. But as you can see, this part of the cover, the flap is torn. So what I want to do is repair that. What I have found with another book that the spine was torn on it and I had to repair it is actually taking some faux suede material. You could also do like a faux leather, but taking a little bit of this faux suede and gluing it there, it will strengthen it. So what I'm going to do is turn it over and I'm going to trace where I need to cut it. So I'm just going to lay that on there like that and line that up right where it needs to go. And I'm just going to take this pen and go around it. So I had a fantastic 4th of July. I went to my daughter and son-in-law's house. We had a barbecue. We swam. We have a swimming pool. It's way over. I think we're hitting like 113 degrees right now. Um, so it was hot, but you know, when you're in the air conditioning, it's, it's not too bad at all or in the swimming pool. And we had a barbecue and then we lit some fireworks. Both of my grandsons lit the fireworks. They have like a torch so that they're not close to the fireworks and then they can run away quickly to be safe. And then it was so funny. So um, they were doing one at a time and actually somebody in their neighborhood had seen us setting off fireworks. And he came over with this huge box of fireworks and said, I see your, you know, um, lighting fireworks, we're tired and we have all gone to, you know, my, my family's all going to sleep and uh, we're not going to be letting any more, you know, light. So would you like them? And so we had so many. So at one point after we'd been watching fireworks for about an hour, I grabbed they were doing like two or three at a time sometimes but i grabbed like three of them and i went and set and set them out in the middle of the street they live in a cul-de-sac and uh, i put them there and my daughter goes oh grandma must be getting tired she wants to go home and go to bed that's why she's doing three at a time and i'm like oh my heavens 
you are you know me so well <laughs> oh shoot i'm gonna just trim this off a little bit but it was a good fourth of july my son had to work so yeah i'm just gonna do a little bit more because when i do fold it over i don't want it to impede this fold right there and this will give it a lot of strength and it just kind of looks old so it doesn't and you can do either either side i like the darker side so then now what i need to do is poke a hole and i'm just going to mark it right about there and I'm going to take my crocodile, my big bite one, and I'm going to set it in here and punch a hole. And it doesn't cut it absolutely perfect, but it gives, gives a, a good, a good enough hole so that then I can come in with a pair of scissors and kind of trim it up. So those of you that live in the United States, what, what did you do on the 4th of July? We had hamburgers out on the grill and my son-in-law made chicken wings and my daughter made a pasta salad. I made potato salad and then I made a big bowl of strawberries and blueberries and then we had like angel food cake and then whipping cream over the top for, for dessert. Yeah, I think I need to make it just a tiny bit bigger. Isn't this going to make for a really neat little journal? Be able to have it in this. Uh, I think I need a tiny bit more. Have it in this little case. Well, you guys, I am enjoying not having to go to work i'm telling you it is so wonderful to be able to sleep all night long you guys know i worked night shift and you know that flip-flopping back and forth was you know a little difficult and i know like last night i was when i got home from my daughter's house the barbecue i thought well i better look at my calendar because you know, I've got Gail Augustinelli's retreat coming up, and I thought, oh, I better see when that is so that I can start, you know, putting some stuff aside to take to it. And, you know, it's about a week away, but it was so exciting because I thought I have an entire week to do that and I don't have to go to work in between, which normally I would have had to. Uh, I, you know what? I'm just going to go a tiny bit more. You know, this is kind of tedious, some of these things like this, but it's worth it in the end because you will be happier with your journals.
if you just take the time to have it exactly like you want it. And I want to make sure that it, it does close and snap shut. I tried my half inch circle punch and it wouldn't go through it. It wouldn't go through the, the suede material. Okay, that might do it. Oh yeah, there we go. That's perfect. So what I'm going to do to adhere that is I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. It's Beacons 3-in-1 Fabri-Tac glue. And that's going to give it some nice strength and repair that tear there. I like the Beacons glues because they are a solvent based and not water based. So they do not wrinkle your paper. I'm just going to flip that over and lay that in there going to be fantastic that's going to that's I can tell that's going to work beautiful and see it you know you do see a little bit of um, the difference but it's not huge just grab a little wipe here and press down there. So let's let that dry and we will see what it looks like or how it feels when it snaps shut. Now the other thing that I thought I would do was take some of this tatting. Now you guys remember me showing you this tatting that I bought in Italy. And I think this piece will go really nicely up in this corner and around down through the spine and then up. Let's see, how do I want to do that? Probably like that because I want to make sure that this comes up there. So let's see shall i just go ahead and put all the glue on in advance and then hope i get it down the right way i i think that's what i'm going to do so again where's my fabric tack here it is and to get close to see everything i'm going to bend down and take off my glasses The nice thing about Fabri-Tac and the Beacon 3-in-1 glue, it does give you a little bit of wiggle room. Now, the other thing is some people have said that they don't like it because it gets thick. Well, because it is a solvent-based glue, It will dry out, especially here in Arizona, and get kind of thick. So what I do is one of the ingredients in it is acetone. So just the regular stuff that you use to take off uh, your fingernail polish with, take some of that acetone, like a you know tablespoon, teaspoon, whatever, however big your bottle is, add it to 
your bottle, shake it up real good, and it thins it out. This is stunning tabbing. Oh, it's just very delicate and uh, I was so lucky to find this. I want to make sure it doesn't come off. Okay, I think that's going to work. Wish me luck here, guys. Think it's gonna work I think I did it by George I got it I just need to turn this one over there we go oh that's gonna be fantastic I may have to put a tiny bit more there Yeah, that's going to look pretty. I like that. So my little cover for a tiny little journal is now dried. This, this is perfect. Look at how wonderful and strong that is. And I love the tatting around it. I am looking for a piece of lace to put here. And it was in my stuff that I bought in Italy. I don't know if you guys remember, it was only about this long. It was fairly small and I only had one small piece of it. I have looked and looked and I cannot find it. Oh, the other thing is, <laughs> so when I was kind of editing the video, this nail over here was if you backtrack and look at the video, this nail was a total mess. It was so jaggedy, it kind of had gotten torn off. I was looking at that and I was thinking, oh my heaven, sister, you got to fix that. So in between the first part of the video and this part, I have painted my nails. So you don't have to look at that nasty fingernail over there. Anyway, back to the, the journal. So to fit a journal in here, it is going to have to be, I measured it. It can't be any wider than two inches and it can't be any taller than I would say three and a quarter and thickness wise, I'm going to say not more. I could probably go in an inch. So I'm going to write that down one inch thick. Okay, so I've write, written those measurements down. And what I want to use is I'm going to set this over to the side. One of the kits I want to use is Rachel's Italian Digital Kit, number three, Travel. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I did. These images, you can see, are quite large. They're beautiful images, but I want them to look nice in that tiny little journal. So I'm gonna show you what you can do to achieve that. Now I've already done a couple here. So 
So this is one of the pages. Let me pull out the original one so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's see which one is that. Well, we're, oh, you know what? This one was a freebie. I think it was from Rachel's that I printed out, but let me pull this one out because I believe that one is in this kit. Unless I printed off the wrong kit. Well, that's a heck of a note. Where is it? No, this was the freebie. This one is in the kit. Oh, bear with me while I rummage through these pages. You know, I've got several of Rachel's kits, and I do keep them in those little folders, but somehow I may have goofed it up. It says Rachel Italian Digital Kit 3 Travel. I'm going to put the camera on hold, figure this out, see which kit I'm using. Okay, I figured out which kit I'm using. It's her journal pages kit number four. And so I'm going to show you. So what I did is I printed six per page. So that's the original big copy. And this is the smaller one. Same thing here. Six per page. You see, that's the big one. That's six per page. And I did that with the entire kit. The big one. And then the smaller one. And then I backed them with some of my own digital kits. Um, let's see. Only the smaller ones. Like this is a small one here. I, I just did a blank piece of paper there. That's one of my uh, pieces I have. This is from my lace kit. Um, they're over in my Etsy store. I did six per page here. And when I cut these out, I'll show you what they look like. So let me show you, in case you don't know, how to print multiples per page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my computer over to in front of the camera. And hopefully you can see. Let's see. Let me bring you in a little bit. Okay, so I have a Mac. And this is Rachel's kit here. And it's the PDF one. As you can see up here, it says it. Italian Journal Pages Kit Number 4. Let me bring you in a little bit more. There you go. All righty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one image. And I love this bottom image. So I, I only have that one picked. Okay, so you see it's on the screen. What you're going to do is go up here to File, up in this little box up here. You're going to go File, and then scroll down to Print, and then this comes up. And this is how you determine like settings and what have you. Now there is the big picture of the kit, but down here it says copies per page. And if you click on this little drop down box, you can have one, two, four, six, nine, or 16 copies per page. So I'm going to click on six of them. OK, 
okay? Copies per page is six. And now you can see they got smaller here. So then I'm just going to click print. And that's going to talk over to my printer and it will print out six per page. So let me put my computer back out of the way. Hope it doesn't make you guys dizzy. Okay, it's still printing up. I'm going to go over and grab it. Starting to get a little bit dusk here. The sun is setting, which means it will cool off to maybe 100 degrees now. Okay, I'm going to walk over to my printer. And you see now that has six per page. And I don't know why, but something else is printing off. So let me turn off that printer. It maybe had thought I wanted the entire kit printed out. So then now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is bring up these pages. And here's one that has six per page. And all I'm going to do is tear using my tear ruler. A set of the page. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six per page. So you can make several little journals. You can use this for collaging. I love this option. Now, I don't know how to do it on any other computer because I have a Mac. Um, Okay, so there's one of those images. It goes like that. And then I'm going to fold it in half. And then that will fit right into that little book perfectly. And I can add some in extensions here. Uh, I'm going to have to redo this because this is upside down. That bugs me. <laughs> so what I did to fix that page because it was backwards, I scanned this piece of a ledger that I bought in Italy and I will add it to my Etsy store when I have time. But what I did is I reprinted this and then because it's in my computer, I did it four to a page because if I had done it six to a page, you wouldn't have been able to see the writing very well. So let me tear this down and let's see how that looks for the book. And those ones that I messed up on, you can use those for collaging, for making pockets, for making envelopes. This mat, I love it. It's a new Tim Holtz mat, but it is a little bit slippery, so the ruler slips and moves around as you're tearing your paper. Okay, let's see how this turned out. I think it's going to be better. Okay. Yes. See how much nicer that is? So let me zoom you in a little bit. And we will just ink this up a little bit to get rid of that white. And that's going to be a good page in 
the journal. I love that. Look at that. Look at that handwriting. Oh my gosh. My sister, Sherry, you hear me talk about her all the time. She's She's quite the crafter. I wish she lived closer to me. But she has done a calligraphy class, and she, she can write like that. So it's beautiful. So let's just fold this in half. And there's another page. So there's two pages to our small little journal. I'm going to continue on and tear these papers down, and then I'll be back with you guys. So I pulled out some other papers, Italian papers, and I'm gonna add them. Just gonna tear them down a little bit. A lot of these um, papers I had bought from Rachel in page packs. This was prior to me going to Italy. So on this one, I'm going to have it go this way in the signature. And then I'm going to make it into a pocket or a little tuck spot. So that is going to be the width. I maybe need to tear it down a little bit more. So you guys know what I just did? I put a deposit down on a dog. You know, you've heard me talk about my little Finn, my daughter's dog. He's so stinking cute. She brought him over yesterday so he could take a nap with me. That's how that's how spoiled that dog is. <laughs> and so um, I want one just like what she has. He's just, he's a Wheaton Terrier. Well, you know what I'm going to do for this? Let's see how. So I want it to be, how long, how tall did I say? Three and a quarter. Well, that's definitely going to be way bigger than what I need it to be. Let's go here. So we're going to cut it like this, tear it like this. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here about three and a quarter and then that will be a pocket just let her like a little tuck spot there that'll work just like that and then if i fold it like this it will fit in like this and that'll be a little tuck spot there and that'll be a tuck spot but let me just make sure it's going to fit in here. Yeah, it does. I think I might just tear off just a tiny little sliver here. Okay. So that's a page. Then the other thing is I have this, and I believe I got this. It may have been on a bag when I was in Italy. And so what I've done is I cut it down. It says Venice, and I will put something there. So that's going to fit perfectly. And then this is from a magazine that I got from Rachel. And I thought I might take one of these images. Let's do this. I'm 
So yeah, I'm going to get a dog. She is just bred the dog. So it will still be a couple of months before I get her. Let's see here. How do I want to do this? See, that says Dennis down there. Get this to a more manageable size. Uh, let's see. I think we can go this way. Hmm. You know, I think even though I want those torn edges, I think it'll be better if I bring in my paper cutter here. So three and a quarter. Tall. It's going to cut off some of that writing, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit further here. It's not going to be perfect. And then what I say has to be four inches. Oh, I like this part down there. Oh, I know what I'll do. Okay, that fits in there. We'll just fold it like this, and then we'll fold this in and have that be like a little tuck spot on that side, and a little tuck spot on this side. Yep, okay, that fits. Let's see what else we have. I have a dictionary page here. It's in Italian. So again, let's do, let's make this stronger. So we're going to fold that over. I'm going to glue that down. See my glue stick, it's kind of funky there. Okay. That'll make that a little bit stronger. And so then we need to have it four inches. I am not good with math. I tell you, I am just, so this needs to be three and a quarter. I'm always goofing stuff up when it comes to math. And then we'll also turn this over and strengthen that corner, that edge. Oops, sorry if I was out of frame.
Okay. I think that's a little skinny, but I think it'll still work out. Yep, okay. Let's see, what else do I have? This is really thin. I think I might just save this for collaging. Oh, I've got this. We'll have that in there. So we need to trim it off a little bit. I think I will just do that off each side. And then I think it will fit in without any problem. And let's see here. It's going to stick out a tiny bit. Mm. Oops, a dress I can tear off, cut off just a sliver more. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this and fold it up so it's like a pocket. Yeah, and those will be two little tuck spots there. Okay. And then I thought about the front cover. I have this, it's old postcards. And I like that they are pretty thick. So this is what I'm going to do for the cover. I'm going to tear two off. That's going to be the front. And that's going to be the back. I can't remember where I bought this. But I'm going to cut it down so it will fit. Hopefully. I don't know. Bring that down. So what I have to do is I'm going to have to rejoin them so that Okay, how did I It needs to be two inches in width. So let's see, let's cut a little bit of this off. I want the whole gondola in there. Okay, so that's two inches there. Then in height, I said three and a quarter. Yeah, that fits. That's going to be nice. And the same thing with this one. Well, let's see what other image I have because this is going to be sideways. Let's see what else I have here. That would work good and that one would look good because they're, yep. Okay, let's see. Let's just stay with the Venice theme. these back in. Okay, let's just take off the 
edge. That'll work. Two inches. And then we'll do three and a quarter in height. There we go. Okay, that's my front and back cover. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to attach them. So I'm going to have that be the front and this the back. So what I'm just going to do is just hinge them with just a little bit of, let me think on it a little bit here. So what I've done to make the cover is you saw me cut both of these and then this is a little piece that was left over it's about an inch i checked it it does fit in the journal nicely and then i've also cut another small piece of lace to lay over the top here so i'm going to glue that in wonder if I can put the, um, the lace right, or the glue right over the top. I'm going to try that. We'll see what happens. I may have to add a little bit of Fabri-Tac also. As a matter of fact, I I think I'm going to where it's a little bit thicker, like along this edge here. A little bit right there where those flowers are. That way it doesn't bleed through. Okay. Just going to lay it over the top here. And then that created our spine along with our front and back cover. Okay, so just like that. Okay, there's a couple of other papers that I want in this. I believe this had some kind of a little cake wrapped around it. So let's say four inches. No, wait. Here I go again with my math. Oh my gosh, Hewitt, you're just so crazy. Okay, we said three and a quarter inches in height, which is about that. And then four inches this way. And that will give us, when we fold it over, that will give us a two inch little page. I just like that guy in there. Let's make sure that will fit. Yep. Okay. And then I have a couple of really old pieces of paper. This is really nice, nice paper. Think what I want to do with it is I do want to tear it. I 
Okay, so we need it about three inches tall. So we'll do that. Just about there. It's a little bit shorter, that's all right. And I'm gonna do like the previous ones and fold in a little bit. Yeah. Just to make little side tucks. Okay, that works. And then this was a blotting paper that was in one of the journals I bought. It's very fragile. I'm not sure if I want to use that. Oh, and I have some straw paper. Um, you see this all the time with Rachel's journals. Well, this was one that was actually printed. So I am going to use my cutter for it. And so we need four inches in length or width. And then three and a half or three and a, I'll do a three a little bit shorter. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, we've got that. Yep, okay, that'll work. And let's see. I have this old piece, too. I love this. This was on a front of a bunch of papers that I received. Mm. I'm going to hold off on cutting that just because I may already have too many papers. But one thing I want to do is I want to show you these candy wrappers. And I'm going to show you the candy. Oh my gosh, it is the best candy. So I bought it in Italy. If you can ever run across this brand of chocolate, it is heavenly. Heavenly. And so I've got these wrappers. This one's cool. And this one's cool. I thought I would take a couple and attach them to some paper. Just grab some scrap here. I've got this, and then I thought we could make little cards out of it, or little um, pages. Where's my glue page? Okay, I'm throwing my ruler around. Let's just see what happens with these. I don't know if this glue stick will work on this. I maybe should add a little bit of um, 
uh, my beacons also. I think I will on the edge. Oops. I think that'll be a fun page in the journal. So what we'll do is just cut this out here. That one fits perfect, but this one's too, too short. So we'll just trim it off. Okay, so that's a page. So what I'm going to do is in the video here, attach all these pages, sew them into uh, signatures, and then I will be back with you guys next Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.